If you haven't already, check out our log beer brew day video where we fermented the beer with a log sent to us from our friend Daily Crafton. In this video, we're talking to Daly about the log, home brewing, wild yeast, and his current beer projects. I think it's time. Yeah. All right. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I guess my, my may as well start from the beginning in terms of like your brewing history. I guess I know you got two breweries opening up, but I was kind of just wanted to start kind of from the beginning and see when you got in the home brewing and you know what I guess what sparked that interest. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was probably six or seven years ago now. Some friends gave me a, a homebrew kit for as a gift for Christmas, I think. And, uh, you know, I just around that time, increasingly just more and more into craft beer and stuff that was outside of um, what you would, you know, typically drink as a, as a beer offering. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I guess I'd mentioned, like, oh, it'd be interesting to try to make beer and see how that goes. And so they, they got me a kit, and I made it. Uh, it was a Saison, and uh, I really loved it, and I really enjoyed the process, and that was really what kind of sparked the whole thing for me. Yeah, was, I guess six six years ago now, maybe. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so Lawson originally kind of pitched this idea, um, who I know you've been communicating with. He's, he's our, our main video editor. And I was like, yeah, man, that'd be super cool. I'm like, the odds of this guy sending us his only log are probably about zero. Yeah. <laughs> but so, like, super appreciative of you uh, trusting us with it. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I appreciate it, too, because I, I, I like having the corroborating evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... I sound I, like a full of shit when I say it, no, you know? <laughs> no, because I'm drinking this right now, and honestly, it's... It is. It's delicious. I mean, it really is. Good. So it's just something I never would have dreamed of just picking a log up and using it. So yeah, it's super, it's super cool. There's definitely a bit of a roll of the dice the first time you do it. Um, but subsequent, like once you, once you know that there's something on there that is doing a, a pleasant fermentation, you can repitch it. <laughs> and so, it, it should, it should kind of strengthen whatever is on there that happens to, uh, be efficient at fermenting the maltos. Yeah. So the first question I had was, um, how many logs did it take to find that log? I guess like just how, one. That's I it. Mean, that was the the first one I did, and I've done I've done others since that haven't been as good. So I just got lucky. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I do. I mean, I mean, I play around with wild yeast a lot, and you know, I'm trying to like harvest it out of the air like uh ambiently or off of wood or um uh fruit and things and you know when you get a good culture you just kind of save it and repitch it or whatever absolutely yeah and we we actually just brewed we just we didn't have a lot of time this week so we just did a quick extract uh -huh. and um it's sitting in the uh fermenter now so Tomorrow, I'm going to pull the log out and let it dry over the weekend, and then we'll get that shipped back out to you uh, okay. on Monday. So we'll cool. get that back to you soon. But I, we kind of wanted to do um, – I wanted to try it in, like, a darker beer, so we kind of just did, like, a brown extract kit. Yep. Um, we didn't do any hops, just seeing if we could pull out a little bit more of the sour notes mm -hmm. from, from the log. But, um, I mean, if it's even close to this first batch in terms of flavor, you know, I'll be, I'll right. be stoked. So we're, we're super excited. Good. Um, yeah, man. And then I know you have two breweries opening. Yeah. 18th Ward and then Leven is it Levenant? Levenant, yeah. Okay. I know you have the hat on. I didn't know how to pronounce it, so Levenant. Yeah. yeah. Levenant. And then um and from kind of emailing back and forth and you know reading through some of the emails and stuff we've corresponded, it seems like you've isolated some of the yeast from that log that you're going to yeah. be using in both breweries or yes okay okay and then you worked with bootleg biology on that as well right right so the yeah the uh i sent in some slurry to bootleg biology and they pulled the the sack strain out of there and we had that sequenced and it was uh it was saccharomyces genus definitely 95 percent match d uh to uh cervicea 
And it was even more closely matched to a species called Saccharomyces paradoxus. But it wasn't actually either one of those things. It was, uh, as Jeff put it, um, likely unknown to science to the science community right now. So I named it. <laughs> um, I named it Saccharomyces contraterum. So I found it in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is an anglicization of a, du- of a Dutch word, Brooklyn, which some people think is translated broken land because it was really marshy uh, before it was settled. So uh, I Latinized it. The word contritum means broken and terum means land. Portmanteau those two words into contraterum, and that's how I named that, that yeast. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and is that going to be the house strain in the – the table beer that you're doing at Lebanon? Yeah, it's the, it's the, um, yeah, it's a single culture. It's cool because I'm kind of, I think I can get the best of both worlds. I do have this, was, I guess once was a wild, I don't know if I can call it wild anymore after I put it through the process, but uh, it's a, a yeast that I discovered, sort of. So that's that, like that whole story is going to be the Lebanon signature. Uh, but since I have it isolated and kind of like the pedigree done up and, you know, I know what it is and I know it's like a single strain of your culture, I can brew it commercially and expect consistent results. Right. Um, so, uh, so I'm really excited about where that's going to go, you know, being able to tell that story, but also be able to kind of mass produce it. I'd like to get, you know, as wide of a distribution on that as possible. This is really not that much like it on the market. You know, you have, you kind of have like, on one end, you have like macro loggers and this and the other that are like easily reproducible and like wide reaching, um, but they're, you know, and then, uh, and they're affordable. I guess to me, like affordability is a big thing with the, this. Then on the other end where you would typically consider your wild beers are like very sour and like aged for months, you know, right. to a year to a couple of years. And they're, they're, um, they're beautiful, but they're very expensive. And so they're inaccessible to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, Whereas with this strain, it you know produces like that you know that very nice saison character, yeah. Um, but you know you can you can turn it around in a few weeks, two three weeks, um, and uh, and you can make it available to a a, a wider range of people. No, so it, sure. That's 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 what I like about where I'm going with the Levinot project. Yeah, so it's kind of a cool product because it's it's a wild yeast that you took and were able to isolate, but now you can kind of brew with it consistently and you don't have to worry when you go into production, which is super. It's a really cool story. I mean, and the beer is, like I said, the one we brewed, I'm assuming it's similar to what you've tasted in the past. Is It's pretty solid. Yeah. Um, and we're, it, the keg's not going to last long. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I mean, I hope you saved a little of that slurry. You can just use it later on. Yeah, but... we got a little bit, so cool. we got Good. some in the fridge. So, um so I guess going back to the log, the, the moment you laid eyes on that beautiful baby, uh-huh. well, I guess what's the story like? I, you're, I know it was in Brooklyn, but like, were you just lo- out looking for a log, or I was I was foraging for firewood in a park in okay. Brooklyn because that's what you do, right? <laughs> um, no, we had like a little like a little fire pit in our yard, and that's illegal. But you know, I always turned the water hose on and brought it out next to the fire with me. And- <laughs> watched it judiciously and I would go and pick up sticks and logs to burn and I found that one and it, it, for, it looked really beautiful so I was like I don't really want to burn this one maybe I'll like lacquer it or make a little lamp out of it with some I don't know I was right. like, but I set it in the yard I was like I don't want to burn it it looks nice so you know it was maybe like shortly after that I started screwing around with the wild yeast and I got the bootleg biology kit to harvest and culture your own yeast and I started reading about Scandinavian brewing techniques from the days of Yesterfar and right. their their fixed stocks that they would put in and um, you know they considered it to be a magical log or a magical pattern. And I was like, oh, maybe my log's magical. I'll you know I'll I'll gamble one batch just to see what happens. You know, totally. So I, I brewed one up and put it in there and um, it worked. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Now you know. And that was and first. Not, that, that was <laughs> that was your first try with any like kind of just would yeah oh wow just that's crazy yeah that's nuts yeah i figured you probably had like 20 attempts or something that's that makes it even kind of more crazy to me like it's like it first try. yeah 
I had to do like I, you know, like I said, it, if it floats, like a little bit of mold can grow on it. So you know, I'd recognize that a couple things, and so I did had to do some experimenting with like keeping it submerged and such. But but yeah, you know, it more or less worked perfectly the first time. Like it smelled great. The crowds and looked normal. Yeah. everything looked normal. Yeah, it's wild. We just used yeah. like a like a hot bag with some stainless steel fittings in it to kind of anchor okay. it down, and that's worked really well. Just did a little sitch over it, cinch over it, and it's held yeah. it down. So, and typically you're doing three days, it seems, on the log, like yeah. before you pull it. I mean, it's probably the wood's probably. I think it's a. I think it's a Japanese maple. Okay. Based on this, is where I found it, like the tree and like where, it, the, like there's like, you know, like the Pangea looks like Africa and South America kind of fit together. There was a part of a tree that looked like this came off of that right right near it, and that, I think it was a Japanese maple tree. So I looked up that too. I was like. Is Japanese maple toxic? <laughs> Probably smart, yeah. You know, because like there are certain woods that there's some toxicity to it, so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't poisoning myself. And I always drink a healthy amount of it myself first when I'm doing wild experimentation, just to see if I get sick. Right. If you <laughs> don't, yet. You don't so, want to, you don't want to get your friends sick, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I try to look up those sort of things too, and try to figure out what what the material is, and you know, is there any sort of toxicity to it? there's not that for people yeah. there is for horses <laughs> like, okay. the maple, like the japanese maple is like toxic for horses what well, good to know yeah. yeah a little tidbit i learned that's really Which, good to know i guess the i guess it's like i guess practically like you don't want to put your horse trough under a japanese maple tree or something where like it's falling in the water oh, anyway that's neither here nor there for the <laughs> it's a it's a tidbit of information that's yeah. great <laughs> so like let's say i wanted to go find um, you know, a, a log or, or a stick or whatever to, mm -hmm. to kind of try and mimic the experiment you've done. Is there, like, I'm sure you've done quite a bit of research at this point. Is there something that you would look for? Like, if, if someone at home wanted to try this, like, yeah, is there like some signs that are like, hey, you shouldn't try this one or like this? You know what I mean? Like, what's? I mean, yeah, I would, I would say wood that says weathered as you know as you can get you know i don't you wouldn't want like i don't think you want anything too green because you would definitely leach a lot you'd leach a lot of the flavor of the wood into the beer if it was really green which might be fine if it was like oak or hickory or something nice if we give it like a smoky i don't know something but uh yeah i know what kind of wood it is you know um they're definitely uh, you know like cedar is you know mildly toxic although you know we do cook with it but there is like a mild toxicity to it um so just know what kind of wood and I found out through all this that um, uh, I think it's, I can't remember if it's red or white oak, but Saccharomyces paradoxus actually prefers to grow under the bark of either red or, I can't remember which one it is though. Okay. So like, if you find some oak, uh, you might be, um, you might be onto some Sac paradoxus strains. Okay. So yeah, and definitely the, the more weathered, I think probably the better, just because you're going to get less extraction of wood. And it's had more time to kind of develop a culture laying, yeah. um, you know. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. But again, it's gonna be, you know, look, you may do it and it may be bad. <laughs> well, yeah, that, I mean, and that's kind of why I just assumed you had done multiple, multiple batches with different yeah, logs. Yeah, I got lucky, it was just- Yeah, straight log. Luck. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the amazing. The first time, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And then, so, like, if we wanted, like, let's say we find something we like, if we, you know, this summer, if we find some wood that works. With uh, bootleg biology, um, I know you worked with them closely. Is there, like, you said there's a kit. So, basically, do you just swab, or do you send them, like, a slurry, or? Yeah, they'll do a little bit. I mean, I've sent them swabs, and I've sent them slurries. They kind of, they'll work with both of those. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's called the boot, the backyard yeast wrangling toolkit and okay. it, it comes with um it comes with like some pipettes and some petri dishes and and a few, you know, like some gauze and like agar you know to make your make your plates and like all this kind of stuff for for making cultures right. and instructions and they will bank it uh under their their uh, local yeast project so they're they're trying to make a very comprehensive library of local yeasts from around the world especially the united states just because they're here but they all they have international strains pretty cool gotcha and then like would that like if is it possible to like buy strains from them or are they just kind of like a bank at this point or? yes 
you can't buy you can you can't buy from the local yeast project unless it's yours like i can call up any of my captures gotcha and they'll do up they'll do a pitch they'll do up to 30 barrel pitch oh wow so you can you can go commercial they have and they have a couple of blends that I've been using actually in 18 Ford because that's not, uh, Lebanon's more like the purely wild type stuff and 18 Ford is a little more wide range in the kind of beers we're making. Um, although I am using this strain in our Saisons at 18 Ford, but we have uh, an IPA and some stouts and other things, uh, some IPAs and Bootleg Biology has a, what's called a NEPA blend, um, which has worked really nicely in the IPAs that I've made at 18 Ford. Um, and they have a blend that they work with Brewlosophy um, to create as well, which is like a kind of an all-purpose blend. I um, made a style with that, which is really nice. It just It's like a really just clean fermenting, you know, kind of, it, it really just kind of gets out of the way and lets other ingredients, if you're trying to make like a non-yeast forward beer. Gotcha. Um, so they have some really nice blends. Um, available as well and they have they have a uh, some they have something called a funky weapon a sour weapon so they have a, a range of um things that products that they've been working on um so, you know stores from their local yeast from the some of the stuff they've been doing but also i think blends of other existing things as well just kind of dialing in that 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 ratio and nice. sort of thing nice. yeah they're they're great the guy I don't know over there. His name is Jeff Mello. Um, okay. And they're, super, they're super cool to work with. That That's really cool. So 18th Ward is in Brooklyn, right? Right. Okay. It's a, we're a brew pub. So it's a three barrel system. Okay. Um, and I'm doing some saisons, uh, doing some IPAs, doing some styles, doing some cream ale, you know, a wider, a wider range of things just to kind of uh, service uh, a lot of tastes. Absolutely. Um, and that came about because there was a space available right across the street from a sizable music venue in Brooklyn uh, called Brooklyn Steel. It's about 2,000 person venue. Okay. Uh, and there's nothing in the area, so we'll be the closest bar to that. Um, so that was really just kind of popped up out of opportunity. I have some buddies that own a bar in Brooklyn called Northern Bell, and I would go there. And um, I have a, I'm a member of the Mug Club there. And, um, I would drink there, and you know, then I would just bring some homebrew in from time to time. Just I didn't even think any day of it. I was just having fun. And we were hanging out. Right. And then and then they acquired the space, and they're like, "We want to open a brewery. Do you want to be the brewer?" And I was like, "Yes, I do." That's, that's <laughs> awesome. And do you, do you have like a an an ETA on like when you guys are going to be opening? That should be like in the next couple of weeks. Oh like, wow! We're so close. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you have so, beer in the pipeline once you're ready to Yeah, go? we do. So we finished out the brewery first, like, do, you know, the brewery part. And um, got that all um, set up properly and everything. Right. So I can start brewing. And the, the tap room is being finished now. So gotcha. that, you know, when that's done, we can open. And we already have, I've done five batches now, five free barrel batches. So, you know, we're, we have a pretty good batch stock that we can just open right up with. That's awesome. Yeah. Then how many beers are you starting off with? Six lines. Sweet. Um, and I've brewed five, and I've done collaborations with two other breweries in the area, one called Yonkers Brewing Company, which is just north of the city. Okay. And then one called Keg and Lander, which is in Greenpoint, just like a little north of us in Brooklyn. Okay. So I'll start with four of ours, and then those two collaborations, and then I have a fifth one on deck um, uh, once one of those kicks. Sweet. Or probably can probably just mix it in too, you know, just change it up a little bit. But yeah, yeah um, starting with six, uh, we have six lines, and then we have the option to split off to twelve down the road if we're, cool. you know, really, really banging. That's awesome. And then, yeah. if people want to find info on 18th Ward, what what's the uh, website for that? I, I think it's just 18th Ward Brewing Company. Okay. Com. Let sorry, me double check. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, it's all right. People people can Google too, so. Yeah. Just Google Set. it. Just Google but it, guys. Um, Google machine. <laughs> I think that's all people do anymore. Hold on. Oh, hold on. All right, I see what happened. I turned my Bluetooth off. That's why my keyboard doesn't work. Oh, gotcha. Um, is that where the sound Because I had it going? on the big speaker. Oh, gotcha. Let me, turn, let me just disconnect that. Get so, off now sounds like you got a... Uh, a little a little person in the room with you. Yeah, I do. Our son, Nico, is... Nice. Um, we bring him to the office That's and I'll, awesome. I'll spin you around in a second. You know? Yeah. How, <laughs> how, old, how old is he? Nico is, uh, 
it, seven months old now? Oh, seven wow. months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Congrats. That's but awesome. But he's pretty chill. He can come to the office with us pretty Dude, easily. That's nice. He just, he probably hears me talking. Yeah. And then. He's like, what are you uh, doing? <laughs> yeah. I, and, and yeah, I don't know why keyboard's being fun today, but. Oh, it, we'll, we'll put it. Just, we'll, we'll Google just, it, put it in the notes. Just Google a yeah. keyboard for yeah. your company. Uh, and then. You're just. Don't even worry about the dot com. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's not much up there right now. It just says we're opening across the yeah. street from Brooklyn Steel. Yeah, I pulled that up. I was trying to get yeah. a little more. But you, you, you've nailed it pretty good, I think, with, with the description. And then do you have an opening date slated for Lebanon as well? or? Uh, yeah, hopefully within the next couple of months. So okay. with the 18th Ward crew, um, we're, we're going to try to like, – pull our resources up. and yeah, Lebanon, it's just going to be that one style in cans. Again, it's the idea is like, make it like kind of a, a fancy mass market beer. <laughs> and you, so, so you're just going to be focusing on that one, like, yeah. t- like the Saison and, inspired. Yeah, 16 ounce cans just to like That's gain awesome. efficiencies from, yeah. from doing just the one style and trying to, and it really, cause it's about like, for me, it's, it's more about just getting that idea of this yeast out there. Yeah. So it's easy to do that with that one style and then maybe expand from there. But um, <clears throat> with distribution and sales and marketing, you know, 18th Ward and I are teaming up to like kind of do both of those things. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So that... hopefully in the next couple of months, we're going to contract with really Lebanon. Okay. Um, hopefully around here somewhere is a couple of contract breweries in the area. Okay. Um, so there won't be like, then... a, will there be a brew pub for that or that's just going to be direct sales? Yeah, probably in okay. Yonkers down okay. the road. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, I want to get the cans out to market you know, quickly, and then uh, I think we would like to get a brew pub up and running with, for that at some point, too. So yeah. 16 ounce cans and uh, six pack singles. Probably six pack. Yeah. Six, yeah, six packs. Sweet. And I think that's it. Just yeah. release it like that. Dude, that's perfect. And yeah. it seems like a perfect, at least, I mean, if it's similar in this vein, I mean, obviously, if it's like a Saison farmhousey type thing, it's a perfect summer crusher yeah you know? so i think yeah t- timing wise you know i think you'll be yeah i don't think it's a palette it's not like a it's not a fin- it's like it's got something like unique and nice about it but it's not uh, it's not so esoteric that right. you can't you can't just like also think drink it not thinking about it like the first thing that comes to mind like like my mom would enjoy it you know like it's right. it's yeah you know, it's not you know it's just a style i feel like that anybody can appreciate so yeah that's super cool um so is there anything else you think we should we should hit on um obviously i wanted to get the levinot and the 18th ward info out there um dude and seriously this has been super fun it's been a super fun project so yeah good no i think we got you know we covered like the log if you know if you want if if uh the your audience wants to learn more about just that technique i guess just Google QVX stock by K V E I K S T O K K. Okay. And they're the ones they made were beautiful. They would like carve them and they're like elegant and they would put holes in them. And, yeah. I've uh, seen that, like the like, sort of mash paddles and they had like the like almost like a necklace type yeah, thing. They yeah, they would use it that they would hang it up to dry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I was reading they would actually like after they pulled it out, they would leave the slurry on it and like roll it in flour and then hang that up. Oh interesting. Yeah, we cool. we tried a commercial pitch of that uh, every in a recent beer. It just blew my mind like in three days. You know, we yeah. fermented a hundred, pretty much no off flavors and like yeah. mind blowing. Like yeah, those things don't rip. <laughs> dude, it was like twenty four hours. It was done. I was like, check that. Check it stopped bubbling. I was like, you should check the greeting. Yeah. It was like done. I was like, dude, yeah, mind blowing. So yeast. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Sweet bowl, can we can we see your little guy since? Uh... Oh yeah, let me let me circle it around so awesome. see the coming around with the, the claw hammer kids. <laughs> my wife Cindy. Nice to meet you. Nico, oh. let me. Yeah, you're. Let me... <laughs> I'll pull him out of his. Uh... Here he is. Here, buddy. Let me get him out of here. Oh, cute. This is Nico. Hey, Nico. <laughs> he is cute. There we go. Oh, man, that's a great sweater, too. <laughs> All right. That is a fantastic sweater. Well, I have a bunch of family um, in New York, so next time. Next sorry, time... one second. I can't. Oh, sorry, man. 
I got a I got a bunch of family in New York and in the city. So next time uh, yeah. I'm up there, I'll definitely I'll definitely reach out and give you a holler. Definitely stop by 18th Ward for sure and see where life is. That'd be awesome. So, We'd love to meet y'all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, most of, most of my family's up in Staten Island, and all the younger cousins are in Brooklyn and you know right. area now. So, but definitely definitely we'll be checking that out next. Usually once a year we're up there. So. Yeah, so, please stop by 18th Ward, oh, totally. and if you ever, I don't know if you make it to Westchester County at all, but, you know, we're up, up this way. Okay. We live up in Yonkers. Okay, yeah. Um, and that's, you know, when they're living up, Brick Hug gets cracked, and that's probably where. Well, you'll be. In Yonkers, yeah. Perfect. Awesome. But, dude, this has been fun. I'm give lot, let you talk to Lawson for a sec, because he was kind of the coordinator of this magical adventure, so. Yeah. What's up, Daly? <laughs> hey, dude. How's, How's it going? Up? Thanks so much for sending us your log. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Kyle put me on this. I I watched that uh, Viceland show. Yeah. And oh, right. yeah, and I was like, Kyle, you should brew beer with a log. Like, check this episode out. And he's like, Lawson, this is your your challenge. He kind of it was like a joke almost at first. He was uh-huh. like, find Log Man and get his log. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so it was really just a Google though. I googled like daily home brewer. And you yeah. came up. Your your website is pretty. It pretty. It worked out pretty well. You have it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's luckily my name is unique enough. There aren't a whole lot of daily craftsmen out there. So yeah. You know, my yeah. name's not Chris Smith. Right. <laughs> right. Probably good and bad. If you're trying to hide, they're gonna find you. <laughs> right. Right. There's no hiding. I'm not hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Well, this has been super fun. And then, um, what address should we send that back to? go into the wrong place or sure getting lost so it'd be sad who knows what someone would think if the log showed up at their door yeah. <laughs> like what <laughs> like, who are I'm these who are these crazy shit. people <laughs> yeah like bunch of bunch of weirdos well dude i am i'm super stoked man it sounds like you got fun fun things going on probably stressful as well but yeah well you know yeah that's part I of the fun yeah <laughs> Sweet. Well, once those cans are out for Lebanon, I'll let us know. I'll, uh, I will. I'll, have... I'll, get, I'll, I'll just send you guys some. Okay. For sure. That'd be sweet. Yeah. yeah. Just compare it to your batch. Yeah. See what you think. <laughs> totally. We'll have to save. I think we're going to can it. We got a little can yeah. seamer, so we I think we'll can yeah. some up just to save them. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, dude, I really appreciate it. Uh, Lawson's going to work his editing magic on this. So, uh, it should come out pretty good and then we'll probably release the videos and then link like this or implement. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but we'll definitely link all the stuff you have going on for sure. So, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate you having me on here as well. It's been Absolutely. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah totally. It's been, dude. Awesome. It's been yeah. a good time. Yeah. So like I said, I'll hit you up when I'm out that way. If you're ever in North Carolina in the Asheville area, let us know. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks right. a lot, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Y'all Cheers. have a good day. You, you too. You too. That beer was the perfect amount for the video.